Welcome to Singapore Polytechnic's inaugural Virtual Parents Forum. While the Parents Forum had been the main highlight at SP Open House for many years, this is the first time we are conducting it virtually. I used to be able to meet parents at our annual open house face to face. As much as I would like to do that with you now, we are all constrained by the circumstances we are in these days. Nevertheless, we are undaunted and so have planned this event virtually. Why? Because it is so important. We want to ensure our prospective students and parents, like yourself, have all the information and resources you need to make an informed choice. This year, we have prepared a video to share with you how SP is keeping pace with the changing world and how we are continuously delivering the most relevant education for our students. I hope you have the opportunity to watch the video. In a few moments, my colleagues will be sharing how the various courses that we offer at SP will position our students for their success in the future. Feel free to engage us. Ask any question that will help you to make an informed decision. Thank you, and I wish you a fruitful time exploring SP's virtual open house. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the School of MAE live info session for Parents Forum. My name is Jenny, and I'm from the School of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering, or in short, School of MAE. Now, before we proceed to the program for this morning, I would like to invite you all to view two videos. Firstly, an infographics video on the various admission exercises applicable for entry to the Polytechnic. And secondly, a school video of the School of MAE. Enjoy. Fahan, Jill and Derek are graduating soon and are interested to enrol in their dream course at Singapore Polytechnic or SP. Are you also interested to join SP but unsure of where or how to begin? Don't worry, let's join Fahan, Jill and Derek to find out more. Fahan will be taking the GCE O-Level examination this year. He loves maths and is always curious about how virtual assistants such as Siri work. Fahan has set his sights on SP's Diploma in Applied AI and Analytics. Fahan, you are eligible for the Joint Admissions Exercise or JAE conducted in January. During the release of the O-Level results, you will receive Form A, which contains your examination results, aggregate scores, and the course codes of all the courses that you are eligible to apply for under JAE. SP courses are listed with a prefix S. Admission to Polytechnic courses is based on meeting the minimum entry requirements, the net EL R2 B2 aggregate score, and the available vacancies. The EL R2 B2 aggregate score refers to the GCE O level results for English language, two relevant subjects, and two other best subjects. Fahan has a co curricular activities grade of excellent. Well done, Fahan! This enables you to deduct two points off your raw ELR2B2 aggregate score. Fahan, are there other courses that you are interested in? You can list up to 12 choices in the JAE Internet system. I know, it's not easy to choose and rank 12 choices. Let me guide you along. As JAE is a merit-based exercise, it is important for you to select your courses carefully. The order of how you list your choices is important. Do utilize all 12 choices. For the first few choices, list your dream courses, even if you do not meet the previous year's JAE range of net EL R2B2 scores. Remember, this range of aggregate scores is just a reference. For the last few choices, indicate courses which you are confident of securing based on the previous year's JAE range of net ELR2B2 score. These courses should still be of interest to you. The JAE posting results will be released through SMS 
and the JAE Internet System. Jill, on the other hand, will be taking her GCE Normal Academic Level examination this year and has been doing well in her studies. She loves interacting with people and would like to enroll in SP's Diploma in Human Resource Management with Psychology. Jill, you sound like the perfect candidate for the Polytechnic Foundation Program, or PFP. This is a one-year program for top normal academic level graduates from MOE schools. Instead of continuing with your O-level examinations in Secondary 5, you can join SP's PFP in preparation for your pre-selected diploma course. When you enroll in this program, you will be offered a provisional place in SP. You will need to pass your foundation year modules to progress to the first year of your diploma course. PFP applications will open in mid-January on the same day the O-level results are released. You will be issued Form P if you are eligible for PFP. Jill, to be eligible for PFP, you need to score a raw ELMA B3 aggregate score of 12 points or better for your GCE NA level and meet the group eligibility. ELMA B3 is the combined aggregate score of English language, mathematics and three other best subjects. Since the Diploma in Human Resource Management with Psychology is under Group 2 of the list of PFP courses, you would also have to fulfill the minimum subject requirements under Group 2. You can submit up to five PFP course choices in the application. Results of your PFP application will be released on the application website. Derek is a higher NITEC student in his final semester at ITE. He loves watching movies and is fascinated by the cool visual effects in action films. He is currently studying higher NITEC in visual effects and would like to enroll in SP's diploma in media, arts and design. Derek, you should consider enrolling in SP via the Joint Polytechnic Admissions Exercise or JPAE, which is conducted in February. To be eligible for JPAE, you need a relevant ITE qualification with a net GPA of 2.0 and above. For NITEC students, a relevant ITE qualification with net GPA of 3.5 and above is needed. CCA bonus points can also be used to improve your GPA ranking for admission consideration. For the JPAE, you may select up to eight courses of your choice. JPAE posting results will be released on the application website. I hope you now have a better understanding on how to enroll in SP to pursue the course of your choice. SP has many admissions exercises available to learners of all ages. Besides the ones featured here today, there is the Early Admissions Exercise or EAE in June for graduating O-level students, ITE students, as well as working adults. There is also the Direct Admissions Exercise or DAE for working adults, students with international qualifications, GCE A-level holders and those who wish to pursue the Diploma in Nautical Studies. Do visit our DAE webpage for the application dates. If you are posted to SP, you will receive an email with the enrollment instructions. For more information on admissions exercises, please visit our SP page below. We hope to see you soon in SP.
The largest industry by far in Singapore is the manufacturing sectors. This contributes to 20 25% of the national annual GDP. The key industry clusters in Singapore manufacturing includes electronics, chemicals, biomedicals, logistics and transport engineering. As the first school offering engineering courses since 1954, the School of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering has continued to be at the forefront of engineering education. Our courses include Diploma in Aeronautical Engineering, Diploma in Mechanical Engineering, Diploma in Mechatronics and Robotics and the Common Engineering Program. With our state-of-the-art facilities like the Advanced Manufacturing Center, AeroHub, and our committed, nurturing and experienced lecturers, we aim to provide our learners with an exciting journey of discovery and development of their full potential to be self-directed learners and professional engineers. We are also proud that over the years, our students have in return provide real authentic solutions to the industry. We learn both theory here and then practical application. So all this actually allow us to build up a strong foundation. For those with diploma, you start off as a technician, aircraft technician. There are opportunities with further training and experience to move up the corporate ladder to become licensed aircraft engineer, quality engineer, planning engineer, and even move into management position. We learn about aircraft inspection, we learn about detection of corrosion, and also build the aircraft system so that we can understand the uh, basics of aircraft uh, system, how they work and the uh, inspection technique, the kind of criteria that we should apply. And all these kind of help you and build up to be a licensed aircraft engineer eventually. Well, for viewers who are waiting for the O-level results next week, or parents with children going through the JAE uh, route next week, we hope the infographics video is very useful for you. And also hope that the second video will show you a glimpse of what we at the School of MAE have and what facilities we have as well. Now for this session this morning, our speakers will share with you the prospects of engineering in Singapore, the courses the MAE offers, the careers and the further studies options for our students, as well as a sharing session by one of our final year students on her experience and journey in MAE. Now, if at any point in time you have some questions for us, um, you can access this link, you can see this on the screen, www.pigeonhole.at and passcode SPOH2021. You submit the questions there and um, hey, you can start now and uh, keep the questions coming. Our speakers will be very pleased to address your questions during the Q&A segment. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite the director, director of our school, Dr. Chong Chi Wei, to share with you the prospects of engineering in Singapore. Dr. Chong. Thank you, Jenny. Good morning, parents. Welcome to the webinar of Singapore Poly, School of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering. Let me start off with the current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm sure everyone is concerned about it. Beyond just the public health concern, I think our dear parents here, you probably are pondering what will be the future like? How is the economy of Singapore going to transform? And what will be the good causes and the possible prospects for your child? And more specifically, Will the three courses offered by the School of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering continue to be relevant and are them well enough to prepare your child for the future? Now, let's start off with the situations. We know things will not go back to the norms. In fact, during the pandemic and the post-pandemic, there are some sectors will in, in fact see some good growth opportunities like the biomedical engineering, the precision engineering, or the supply chain. The two courses, the mechanical engineering, the mechatronics and robotics, are in fact well aligned to prepare our students and the graduates to take a good opportunities in this area of growth. Now, we understand the aero industries are facing some trying times, but for sure we know for the fact, air travel remains the most convenient, fastest, and the most efficient way for travel. And Singapore 
are always well strategic to be positioned as the regional hub for aero industry and for air travel. With a strong support from the government, in fact, this is the right time for the industry to go through important transformation, continue to build capabilities and get ready for the future. In time, it will bounce back very soon. Having said that, I wish to assure that the training for aerospace, the aeronautical engineering in Singapore Poly is a very fundamentally strong in terms of mechanical engineering training. Our students, in fact, beyond the aero industry, they are well positioned and well prepared to join the industry outside of the aero as well. Which is why you see many of our aero graduates manage to get into the mechanical engineering domain of the industry. Many are admitted into the local universities in the mechanical engineering domain as well. In short, the three courses offered by the School of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering prepare your child well, whether for the current pandemic or the post-pandemic situation. Now, things will not be the same. And one of the key factors that Singapore, especially the economy, had to go through is an important transformation, what we call the digitalization process. You probably have gone through this, especially your child, using Zoom, conversion of the physical classroom to the online platform. That is one true form of digitalization. In fact, in the economy, advanced manufacturing is something that the Singapore will go through for current and the near futures. Positions from our De Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Heng, Singapore will continue to invest and make sure we become the advanced manufacturing hub for the regions. If you refer to our Singapore Economic Development Board, EDB website, manufacturing will continue to be a key pillar for our economy. And engineering is the key driver to deliver advanced manufacturing. We always need a strong pipeline of talented engineers. Engineering is an evergreen profession and an evergreen training. Now, next you may ask, if engineering is good, why SP? We, as the first institutions in Singapore to offer engineering education since 1954, more than 60 years of track record, we continue to innovate, to adapt, and to ensure our training are always stay to the currency of the industry demand. And recently, because of that, we are appointed as the IHL lead to drive the training and transformation for advanced manufacturing. Right here in Singapore Poly School of Mechanical Engineering, we are working with the industry partners, core design, our curriculum, and the learning experience to provide training, not just for our full-time students, but for the industry as well. In short, this is the epic center for us to drive transformation in the advanced manufacturing training. Even in the recent report in 2018, a report studied by MIT, when they studied regarding the world leaders in engineering education. NUS came in number eight in the list. In fact, Singapore Poly was honored to be mentioned just slightly outside of the top 10 list. This ensures you that in terms of innovations and adaptability and preparing students for the future is in engineering education, you can count on us. Without further ado, I may call upon my colleague, Mr. So. He will go in depth into the three courses and the common engineering programs, the learning experience and the curriculum that your child may go through. Mr. So, please. Thank you, Dr. Chong. Hi, fellow parents. A very good morning to everyone. And uh, welcome to the Parents Forum. And I'm sure there are some students among the audience. We welcome you as well. Now, you, you probably would have noticed that I've addressed the parents as fellow parents because I myself is also a parent. In fact, my elder boys graduated from school of MAE four years ago. So, on my part, I'd like to address you and to explain uh, the 
three courses and our common engineering program to walk you through so that you understand how do we provide the necessary knowledge and skills for the future economy. Now before that, you probably will be good to ponder over what are the prospects of studying engineering. And I hope my presentation will unfold some of the answers later on. Now the first diploma that I'm going to mention about is the Diploma in Mechanical Engineering or DME in short. Now this is a dip, our first diploma, our flagship diploma that have a long history all the way back to 1958. It's a long history and we have a good track record of training and supply manpower for the economy of Singapore and adapting to a wide range of career options. Because of the long history, it also has a track record of adapting to the changes to the industry. Based on last year, the intake for DME, have, we are taking 200 students, and the EL R2B2 aggregate score ranged from 7 to 16. Now, what will your child be studying in DME. Now, if you look at the infograph, there are three levels. On the first level is the first year subjects. So during the first year, all our students, regardless of the diploma that they choose, will undertake common drop-based module, which are foundational. They are to prepare your child for the second and third year studies. Now, if you notice from second year onwards, we will start to invite your child to select electives, those uh, in the red boxes. So the electives are designed to give your child an opportunity to design their own learning experience in MAE. So electives can be school-based so that they can drill deep into the domain area or poly-wide electives to broaden their horizon for the other possibility of uh, the knowledge that they might be passionate about. So in the final year, there's a capstone program whereby your child will choose either a one semester of internship or one semester of in-campus industrial project. Now for DME students, we also have specialization. So all in all, we have six specialization. As you can see, starting from biomedical, which is growing, very important sector of our economy, to the evergreen energy and facility management and rapid transit technology. And of course, to the very exciting field on automation and robotics and precision engineering because of the emphasis on advanced uh, manufacturing, as mentioned by Dr. Chong. So I'm sure Dr. Chong has given you a glimpse of what the future uh, lies in ahead of your child after the training in a polytechnic. And of course, uh, uh, we also uh, will allow students to choose engineering design and simulation, and a very creative area. Now, for this specialization, your child will have to select three modules for each spe specialization, except for biomedical, which is comprises of six specialized modules. Now, I mentioned about internship and project for their capstone project earlier on. So these are some of the projects that our final year student um, has done. So uh, these are all quite complex projects and, uh, and they have done well and received a lot of accolades from the industry. They provide good solution for the industry. So this is one way for us to prepare your child to be work ready. Now, some of the project that student has embarked on, basically they um, focus on fulfilling the needs of the community, such as urban farming, and design and fabricate some rehabilitative tools for the community. We also have students that break the Guinness World Record, for instance, by having a ping pong ball that flies past the speed of sound. So all these projects uh, seems very fun, 
but behind all these projects are very important engineering and science knowledge that students need to know and prepare themselves for the industry and for future studies. In terms of career opportunity, as mentioned before, DME can fulfill a wide range of career options, ranging from biomedical area, automation, facility management, precision and manufacturing, as well as mechanical product design. So incidentally, you notice that the, this matches very well with our specialization by design. Now in terms of further study, I would like to skip this for the time being because uh, it's, it's quite the same information for the rest of the diploma. I'll leave it to the end. Now next, our diploma in Mechatronic and Robotic or DMRO in short. Last year, the intake was 80 and the ELR2B2 ag the aggregate score ranges from 5 to 11. Now, DMR has a very specialized pedagogy based on the intrinsic motivation framework. So during the first year, the main aim is to inspire your child to the wonders of engineering. So there's a little bit of hand-holding at, at first, and during the second year, they should acquire enough knowledge to integrate, to integrate them together to solve more complex problems. During the third year, in the third year, we will expect them to be confident and competent enough to invent very creative and uh, smart product or services. So another unique point about DMRO is that the student will acquire domain knowledge from mechanical, electronics, as well as programming. And in order to afford such a learning experience, DMRO also have a dedicated learning space. And in this dedicated learning space, students will interact with lecturers and specialists for their own um, knowledge and to do project works, and also to interact with the industrialists as well. And uh, our students are doing a lot of industrial projects, engaging the industrial uh, industrialists and provide, providing good solutions for the industry. In terms of career opportunity, uh, it's about the same as the, DM, the DME counterpart, but I would say that DMO has a good advantage in the area of robotics and automation, as well as system development. Of course, uh, we will expect them to design smart product uh, design uh, and services as well. For the study, uh, let me skip that for the time being uh, and uh, wait until the, the next diploma, which I'm going to illustrate to you. Now, we have the Diploma in Aeronautical Engineering, or D-A-R-E, there in short. Now, just like the, just like the uh, DME, which is the first engineering course in Singapore, D, the DARE or Aeronautical Engineering courses in MAE is the first to be launched among the uh, poly, polytechnics. Last year, our intake was 195, and the ELR2B2 ranges from 4 to 14. It's a quite a wide range. And as mentioned before, we launched in uh, 2002. It is the first aeronautical engineering course offered by a polytechnic in Singapore. What will your child be studying in this course? Well, basically, the first, for the first year, it's the same as the rest of the diplomas. But on, from second year onwards, your child will be studying a module specific to the aircraft context. And of course, your child will also will select electives as well from second year onwards. Altogether, all our students will have to select three electives um, throughout uh, the, their diploma uh, education. Now, one of the important features of the DARE course is the deep industry collaboration uh, within, with the industry, focusing on unmanned area vehicle, composite repair, non-destructive testing, as well as aircraft maintenance. 
In fact, we have our industry uh, to co-create some of our learning experience with our lecturer. Another in, uh, unique feature of the DARE course is that we group all the aircraft elective into tracks for students to choose. So students can choose uh, the elective under the aero design and manufacturing for, com for aircraft component or um, deepening electives on the air, uh, aerospace engineering, focusing on maintenance. Of course, we have students who choose the broadening aspect of the aero uh, curriculum uh, under the aviation management. So the, all these tracks is to give students uh, a chance to deepening the area of the choice. And of course, uh, our their student would also will have to choose between internship and final year project during the third year capstone program. So these are some of the projects uh, done by our students, focusing on UAV and uh, some design some equipment for the airport and also uh, the uh, composite repair project as well. Now all these projects I need to emphasize are industrial-based projects. And in order to facilitate the learning, just like the DMRO counterpart, we also have a dedicated space for them to um, work on projects and to do practical work. And this learning space we call it the Aero Hub. So uh, it is a state-of-the-art facility comprises of uh, four aircraft, which we use for our teaching and learning. And we also use this space to um, have deep collaboration with the industry. Career opportunity. We would, we would expect our, our graduate to be capable in the area of design of aircraft, the uh, engine repair overhaul, aircraft component repair, uh, to be a licensed aircraft engineer, as well as uh, some of them may choose to be a military expert in the Singapore Air Force. And of course, the, uh, the training in the DARE course are basically mechanical, but in the context of uh, aerospace industry. So therefore, when our uh, students graduate from their course, they are highly adaptable to other industry areas as well. So further study. Now all our graduates, be it DME, DMRO, or there, they are able to gain advanced standing and many module exemption in many local and overseas universities. In fact, for the uh, for the engineering program, mechanical engineering program in NTU, they are able to gain direct entry into second year. Now for, the, for our Aero student going to NTU, they are also being invited for direct entry into their aerospace engineering program as well. So in that way, they will take less time to complete the university studies. Now, uh, I understand that uh, due to COVID-19, so the economy in the aerospace industry has been impacted. Now we have to understand that uh, the, the uh, air transport and aerospace industry is a very important component of our economy. Our government is trying their best to revive the air travel again due to the closure of borders and uh, travel restrictions. So if you are keen in the aerospace industry, this is a good time for you to gain the knowledge and the emerging skills to Position yourself when the aerospace industry recover, when you graduate in three years' time. So last but not the least, we have a common engineering program, which is a one semester program. Now I need to emphasize that this common engineering program, or the CEP in short, is meant for students who like engineering, but somehow not very sure, not very sure uh, what engineering discipline to focus on and would like to have more time to ponder over so this program makes sense to them. So last year our intake was 280. The ELR2B2 ranges from 4 to 16. And again, I need to emphasize, if you have a clear idea where you want to focus your engineering training, you should choose that particular diploma as your first choice. 
And uh, at the end of first semester, students will have to choose from the seven courses we provide and three courses from MAE and four courses from the School of Triple E. And finally, uh, I need to emphasize again that the Common Engineering Program is to expose your child with various engineering disciplines, seven of them, and to ascertain their strength so that they can make an informed choice after first semester. So, what's the benefit and prospect of studying engineering? I hope I've given you an overall view about these questions. Our graduates are doing well. These are some of the recent alumni that have uh, received prestigious scholarship for their degree programs. And we also have uh, alumni that uh, you know, travel to a separate path to do business, for instance. For instance, we have Yiming. He was from our um, aeronautical courses and he continued his uh, mechanical training in Imperial College. And recently he has founded uh, a company to provide uh, blockchain services for the industry. So in fact, uh, he was being featured uh, in the Forbes under 30 Asian list of young entrepreneurs. So finally, so why choose MAE? So basically, our curriculum are designed in such a way that your child will acquire deep skills for the industry, relevant for the industry, and there are multiple pathways within the curriculum for students to choose from. So in that way, we give them a sense of autonomy in designing their own uh, learning uh, uh, journey within our school. And there's a wide range of further study and career options as well. And uh, uh, apart from academic studies, we also encourage your child to be active in other areas so that they can have a, a all-rounded type of uh, holistic education in MAE. So we encourage students to involve in overseas immersion program or internship. And we also encourage your child to be involved in competition. For instance, world skills competition where our child, uh, where your, uh, our students are doing very well recently getting a lot of gold medals and all these skills are highly sought after uh, by the industry. And these are some other competition that our uh, students are involved in. And finally, uh, to understand the typical learning journey of your child, the best person whom you should be listening to is the student themselves. Here I'm going to invite our student leader, Kimberly, who will narrate to you her learning experience in MLE. Kimberly. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Mr. So. Yep. Good morning, parents and students. My name is Kimberly, and I'm a year three student from the Diploma in Mechatronics and Robotics. So I've been, this is an introduction slide for me. Uh, six would be my EMB3 score, which is from my N-level score. So I was an N-level student and I have enrolled to the Singapore Polytechnic through the Polytechnic Foundation Program, known as the PFP Program. In the PFP Program, I've chosen the Common Engineering Program because I have passion for engineering, but I didn't know which engineering I would like to go to. So I decided to go through this program to find out more about both the mechanical and electrical modules first before I chose a course in engineering, Singapore Polytechnic. Eventually, I've chosen the course called Diploma in Mechatronics and Robotics, known as DMRO. And I eventually excelled my studies. And right now, I am an MA scholar. I've also been actively involved in the club scene. And my school club is called the Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering School Club. And we host events for mainly the students of MAE. Currently, I'm a year three student and 230 is the number of CC points that which I've accumulated throughout the years of my studies in Polytechnic. So I'll talk more about the club, set, the club culture and the club setting in Singapore Polytechnic. It's quite interesting because it's very different from secondary school CCA. So MAC is a school club for mechanical and we organize events and also attend events in MAE and also for the entire school. So 
Firstly, I got to know about this club through attending the freshman camp when I was in year one. And I was very, very excited. And I think that, hey, why don't I take this you know, one step further and eventually organize my own freshman camp. Although there's a, an interview to get to before I can officially be in the club, as a committee member, I will still try it because I, I won't know if I don't try. And this has given me a very different perspective about CCA because when we think about CCA, it's something we commit to every day in a week, like as in a particular day in a week. So let's say your daughter or son goes to school, you know, and then their CCA days are Mondays and Fridays. So it's a very fixed day. But then this club has given me a perspective of, you know, CCAs are flexible and they can be event-based. And then it's quite interesting because in this CCA, I get to pick up new roles and responsibilities, such as the whole picture about organizing events and management. So there are three roles, primary roles, publicity, student relations, and logistics. That's for the year ones. And then for year twos, there's more, like they're becoming the heads of these uh, the year ones because they have to lead the year ones. And eventually in year three, which is what I am right now, I'm currently the vice president of the club. Yeah, and I have seen how uh, I've developed throughout the years and my leadership has grown and developed through this club. Although in secondary school, I wasn't in any leadership positions, in poly, I was able to be more confident and outspoken. Yeah, so that's why I'm in this live talk right now. And we have organized events like, such as Amazing Race, um, camps, even CIP events. Yeah, and this has given me a stronger bond with my friends and the school of MAE. We have a very family-like culture, you see, in school. So it makes school really feel like a second home to me. Yeah, under this MAC, I've, get, I've gotten to learn a lot of things, a lot of soft skills which I can't obtain from class alone. Yeah, now I'll be talk I also want to thank like my lecturers and my seniors for guiding me, and now I'm a senior, I'm able to guide my juniors also. Yeah. Next, I'll be talking about the overseas trips that I've been to. I feel that SSP is not just um, orient uh, focus only on our studies, but also on our holistic development. So. I was a lucky student. I get to go to these three countries in one year. I went to the Philippines for an overseas social innovation project and uh, Bintan, Indonesia, for an overseas community involvement program and also, last but not least, student exchange in Japan. My final tip is for students who are listening to this. Firstly, it's important to manage your time in poly because I feel that in poly, no one's going to tell you to do things. No one's gonna chase you for homeworks anymore. So you gotta plan out your days. You gotta incur some self-discipline in your timetable. Next is to join a CCA that you love. In Polytechnic, no one's gonna tell you to join a CCA. It's not compulsory, but I would strongly recommend a CCA because it helps you develop as a person. And you can join a lot of CCAs at once, so don't worry. Three, ask questions because our lecturers are very friendly. Our seniors are actually friendly. They're full of advice, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Plus, I mean fourth, be patient and endure throughout the process because I believe that team, times can get tough, you know, and it's all up to you whether you can you want to pull this through and tie this through. I mean with our lecturers and seniors and classmates, friends, I think you can, you know, just be patient. Last but not least, have a very positive learning attitude and keep an open mind when you're studying in poly or anywhere else. Now, thank you for listening to my sharing. I'll be passing the time back to Dr. Chong for his closing statement. Dr. Chong, please. Thank you, Kimberly. I'm sure all of you are excited regarding the course that Mr. So has briefed just now and the experience of our students, Kimberly. Now we are going into the next segment, which is the question and answering sessions. There is a QR code appear on your screen right now. You kindly scan it and start to type in the questions and the inquiry you might have into the pigeon box. We will see you shortly and that is the part where we will try to pick up all these questions and try to address as best as you can. I will see you shortly.
Hello, welcome back again. I hope that the sharing of our speakers will give you a better um, informed choice when you do your JE selection next week. Now, um, we are now going to the Q&A. And um, the first one, uh, the, on the pigeonhole, the first question we have, if I got an EMB3 of 8 points, can I still go with my chemical engineering course? Well, I think this is a question uh, from, from the N-level students. Uh, Kimberly, perhaps well, you want to take this up? Yeah, I'll take this question. I think that, yes, you still can go for it. And then I would think that it's important for you to arrange your choices uh, strategically. So first, yes, if you know that you want to do mechanical engineering, put it as your first choice. And then after that, if you just in case you don't get mechanical engineering, you can still put a common engineering program. And then if you go enter through this program, you have to do well in your SEM 1 of studies, and then you get to be able to choose more freely, you know. Maybe uh, you, you also understand yourself better. So my, my advice is put mechanical engineering as your first choice, followed by common engineering. Mm. Oh, this one also, I think, well, how much focus of robotics is there in mechanical engineering? Well, I must say that uh, Kimberley is from the DMRO, but uh, having said that, I would say that uh, our curriculum are designed to be project-based. So there's a lot of hands-on activity along the way. And as far as DMR is concerned, uh, just like any of our diploma, we have uh, important uh, cornerstone projects every year. So whereby students have a chance to practice on uh, the, uh, not only the knowledge, but also the personal and interpersonal skills. So if you ask me about robotic, uh, well, there's a lot of uh, chance for you to practice, uh, as, especially the uh, cornerstone project. When I say cornerstone project or capstone project, those are the major projects that you will be embarking on uh, every year. So maybe I'd like to hear from our student from DMRO. <laughs> okay, no, so I think for DMRO, we are also uh, focused not just uh, solely on robotics, but I feel that it's an integration of different skills. And I also heard from my friends from mechanical engineering that their final year project involves robotics. So I think it's a very, uh, you know, it's a very multidisciplinary course also. It's not just concentrated on mechanical. Yes. Yep, yep, you're right. Um, we have the next one. How competitive is the engineering courses in SP? Well, I think maybe this part uh, I see as two perspectives. Uh, in terms of the applications from JE, and I think in terms of JE, uh, what Mr. So has uh, shared just now, and even from our website, you can see the range of score, uh, the EL R2 B2, and uh, that is the part where you probably can have a good sense on how to pick the course right. Now, when the students are in the course, I would say how competitive is a course will actually very much dependent on the student. We have students who just coming in, want to have a slightly different kind of approach, uh, manage to get a good pass, but at the same time to have a different development in other areas like CCA. But we also have another range of students who are just motivated to strike as best as they can be in terms of academic, and yet at the same time to do well in CCA. And I think Kimberly is a very good example. So at the end, I think that question, you have to post back to yourself. How competitive and how you want to do, you are very much depending on you. On our side, depending on that wide range, we always customize our approach and to help the students to do well. Yeah. Okay, we have a question here, which is very, very um, uh, popular among students. They always have this question, I'm aspiring to be a pilot. Does their course help me achieve that? Well, uh, I think for the pilot course, uh, we always get this question. None of the courses in Singapore really prepare the student just to become a pilot. In order to become a pilot, you have to go through the basic training course, which is offered by the airline industry themselves. Now, having said that, having a training in their aeronautical engineering, or even for other mechanical engineering, the understanding for the aircraft and the training in the relevant skill and the understanding of the aero industry definitely is going to be very helpful should the student later on take up this basic training course that's offered by the airline industry. So the answer is yes, it will be helpful, but it is not customized specifically just to prepare the student for the pilot. Just to add on to uh, Dr. Chong's uh, comment, 
uh, do we have our aero student who aspire to become a pilot and we encourage them and support them to get their uh, pri private uh, pilot license PPL. So far, uh, many of them have gotten their license while they're studying in SP. Okay, um, can you elaborate more about biomedical engineer in MAE comparing its difference with my biomedical science diploma program? Okay. Yeah. I think this is a very good question. First of all, uh, the biomedical engineering in MAE is subsumed under the mechanical engineering. It is one of the specializations at the end of the year two and year three when students get to choose to specialize in that. Now, the key distinct between these two, biomedical engineering or subsume under our mechanical engineering, it is an engineering domain. Whereas biomedical science is a life science training that is got to do more on the chemistry, the biology part. Whereas the biomedical is concerning about how to manufacture these medical devices, the syringe, uh, many of these are assistive technologies for the aging population focusing on the manufacturing and the engineering domain and that is under the biomedical engineering. That's right. So just to add on, like biomedical science, they basically do more on the laboratory side, whereas engineering side, we do about design of, of um, equipment. Even nowadays, doctors do a lot of uh, you have laser equipment and so on. Those are actually engineering expect on the design by biomedical engineering. Okay, if I'm planning to, uh, if I'm planning to apply for F SYFC's BFC Youth Flying Club. Youth Flying Club, yes. Mm. If I were to enroll in there, would you allow me to do the uh, BFC during the internship time? Well, um, I, actually, our yeah. students we encourage them, not just there, even uh, mechanical and other um, uh, our other courses. Year one, we encourage them to join the Youth Flying Club as a CCA. Yep. Right. So they can actually go on from there to obtain their PPL. So it is not an internship, but uh, as a CCA. Yes, and the purpose of internship is for you to gain industrial experience uh, and uh, to support the industry operation. So for your pursuit to have a, a private uh, pilot license, so it's more like a CCA as, as what Jenny has mentioned. Yeah. I, I think this point is uh, very critical that when we prepare our students, we are not just preparing them to be taking a SYFC, uh, license, it's important that we are backing him up with a sufficient preparation so that should he want to join the aero industry. And what I can assure is, even as a CCA, we have many students who gone through this route and managed to secure the PPL license well under the SYFC. For those yeah. who, are, who are not familiar, SYFC stands for Singapore Youth Flying Club that is open to all students, Singaporean in, stu in Singapore. Okay, this one I think is useful for um, Kimberly. Can hand, can answer this? Yeah. You are the only qualified to answer. Yes. <laughs> will life be different if I come in as a PFP student? I think yes, life will be very different because personally, PFP has given me a very good foundational year to prepare me for my poly years of studies because it has allowed me to transit better in terms mm. of transiting from classroom learning, like just only classroom learning, to also more holistic development stuff. So I get to try out presentation styles, you know, communication styles, and a lot of things I get to experiment with the year, the foundational year that they gave me. So PFP, honestly, I find a lot of freedom that time to explore my interests, like genuinely what I want to do. And also I get to uh, yeah, play around, you know, I get to try out all the CCAs because I, I got time. Mm. Yeah, I just feel that PFP uh, is a very fun, you know, thing to go through. I strongly recommend PFP in SP. Alright, no, this one, um, Kimberly may be able to answer this. How do students get opportunity to go overseas? Okay, so for this one, I think SP has plenty of overseas opportunities, even overseas attachment, as yes, mentioned earlier correct. on. And I think that for me, I've uh, not gone to the overseas attachment, but then I've been to overseas programs with SP. So in my Polytechnic Foundation year, I get to go to Malaysia for a leadership program for four days, three nights, like a camp, which trains on my leadership skills. And then like mentioned earlier, I have went to Philippines for 
to create a project with our Philippine counterpart, you know, and then to solve a local problem. That was very interesting for me because I've never done anything like that before and I've gotten to make friends. And we still talk, you know, until today. I still mm. communicate with my Philippine counterparts. And then I went to Indonesia also because I can speak Bahasa Indonesia. I get to befriend the locals also. So I bring back a lot of memories with me. And then, you know, community service. I feel like service becomes an important part of me. So all these overseas trips are part of my personal development. And these opportunities I usually send through email and also depending on your year of study and what CCA you are in. Some spot CCA actually bring their students overseas to train. Mm -hmm. So besides the CCA part, I think from the curriculum perspective, when it comes to the internship, uh, one key strategic move for Singapore economy is to go regional. And which is why we are teaming up with our government agencies and the overseas companies to send our students for the overseas internship. But I think due to the current COVID situations, it is not so safe to travel. But you can be assured that a lot of all these overseas internships are very much on our radar. We have our program and framework to do that. Yes, the opportunities are plentiful. Yeah. Okay, well, this one last question. What different career opportunities can I get after I graduate from the mechanical engineering course? Okay, uh, may I answer these questions yeah. again? <laughs> Let, let's just pose it from my fellow classmate uh, who graduated from mechanical engineering uh, many years ago. Many of them uh, may not be in the engineering, not because they cannot, but because the opportunities actually are well above beyond just the engineering industry. And what we recognize is, beside the industry that they need a lot of engineers, there are many sectors outside of the engineering industry, they find that the engineering training are very versatile. They find the graduates from engineering training is very good in problem solving, logical thinking, and to churn out solutions in the problem they face. And this is why it is a very evergreen uh, kind of training, uh, not just in the engineering domain, but beyond the engineering domain as well. So it's evergreen. All right, we've um, just come to the end of our Q&A segment. Um, we hope that you find this session very fruitful. If you want to find out more about our courses, please, you can go to this link, right? And we we'll go to the MAE website to find out more about our different courses, our facilities, and what activities we have for our students. Now, if you have some more questions for us this morning, you can join our breakout session, which is happening immediately after this. You can actually assess the breakout session through the link we sent to you through your email previously. But if you don't have, no worries, we're going to post the link later on for you to assess the breakout sessions. Our lecturers are all on hand to, assess, uh, to uh, address the questions which you may have. So thank you again for joining us this morning. Have a good end. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye. And we wish to see your child in SP face to face. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care.